Here's a sobering thought just in time for the cocktail party you're probably attending tonight. Increasingly sophisticated brain imaging is revealing how chronic heavy drinking can change the structure of our brains, shrinking brain cells and damaging the connections between them, even in people who never seem intoxicated or obviously addicted. Here with the story is WSJ's health and science senior editor, Melinda Beck. Hi, Melinda. Certainly Hi, alarming stuff. I mean, scientists have long understood there was a connection between alcohol and brain damage, but are, are they now saying that this is far more common and that other forms of dementia were confused? They're, they're saying that it's underdiagnosed and mm -hmm. underrecognized, and that's partly because they're all different kinds of dementias. Mm -hmm. Everybody's sort of focused on Alzheimer's disease, but that really involves sort of very specific plaques and tangles in the brain, whereas equally prevalent is a kind of dementia called cerebrovascular dementia, in which parts of the brain are just starved for oxygen and blood. And that's the kind of damage that seems to be just the same as what happens when people chronically drink more than they should and have been heavy drinking for, for many years. And so what do these new brain imaging systems tell us about what kind of damage is exactly happening to the brain? Well, as you said in your intro, they can now see um, and not have to wait till mm -hmm. autopsy studies. They, they can see that the gray matter, the actual neurons that um, are the structure mm -hmm. of the brain shrink. You know, you probably heard, oh, you're killing brain cells. Well, yeah. you actually are if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're chronically heavy drinking. And more importantly, the, the white matter that is the fibers that connect one part of the brain to the other and are really necessary for the brain telling the body how to, how to react, how to think, that is also disrupted too. And what part of the brain is at greatest risk for alcohol damage? Well, the part that seems to be affected most is the frontal lobes, which is the seat of higher thinking, planning, um, it's often called executive function, and besides uh, doing all of our, you know, uh, higher knowledge, that's the part of the brain that can sort of control our impulses. And so it would be the part of the brain that would tell you to stop drinking. Exactly. If you were drinking exactly. too much. Uh-oh. Yes. But then if uh, you're impaired. So here's the tricky part, because obviously we all want to know what is okay and where what, what's too much when we hear yes. this sort of a story. And we have heard that a little bit of alcohol consumption can be beneficial, correct? Yes. There are studies that show that moderate drinking, which is defined as you know, maybe a, a little bit over nothing, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, really less than um, about a drink or two per day, right. um, can um, have cardiovascular benefits. Um, it can hold off depression. Um, but there, too, it may just be that the people who are drinking that amount have good social lives, and that can help against depression, too. But they're also able to control their drinking. Which so let is, me ask you something, because we often hear that one or fewer drinks a day is OK. Yeah. But what happens if you don't drink all week and then have four drinks on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> is that bad? Well, this is why the, um, the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism has set up both weekly and daily limits. I see. So for a man, mm -hmm. to keep yourself you know, in pretty good odds of, of, of being okay. It's less than four drinks at any one day and less than 14 total in a week. Okay. And for women, it's less than three in any one day and um, less than seven in a week. So you really don't want to save it all up for one day. Right. So where it also gets sort of tricky is that researchers say your ability to consume alcohol and not sustain brain damage or any kind of damage afterwards is very individual, it is, correct? Yes. And there are some people, based on their genetics, right. um, that really get um, very affected and intoxicated with much less than that. Now, this sort of damage, this brain damage that, that we're discussing can also lead to sort of emotional changes, behavioral changes. Yes. So the big question is, is it reversible? Well, um, in some, some studies, they, they have showed that some of this white matter damage can be repaired. Mm -hmm. In some cases, um, the brain actually finds new pathways to do the same things, um, which is fascinating. Yes. The brain is pretty plastic. But there are other parts that just never quite get back again. Is there so, a key age in which well, you should um, stop drinking? Well, studies seem to suggest that heavy drinking after age 50, 50. is more likely to cause permanent damage. Right. And it may just be that the brain is less able to find new pathways after that. A very, very important information to know as we go into our cocktail parties tonight, <laughs> Melinda. Thank you so much for that.